So, did you know that in Godot, there's now actually several print functions that can really boost your console outputs? They can be a great way to make your debugs way clearer with just a few lines of code. Now, just before we dive in, did you know that thanks to all of your amazing support, I just released an idle incremental game about stars and constellations called Lightem? It's available on Steam for Windows, Mac and Linux for less than 5 bucks, and it's basically designed to be a chill and relaxed experience to learn more about the 80 plus real constellations, or just invent your own and create a unique night sky. So if you're curious, be sure to have a look at the free demo, add it to your wishlist, share it with your friends, and if you try and enjoy it, you can also leave a review on the games page, this is the best way to help support this project. But anyway. Ok, so let's do that for now, you use Godot's default print function. Then you'll be able to easily visualize the values of your variables, for sure, but you'll also be pretty limited in how they're outputted you won't even get spaces between your values. So first of all, you might want to try the prints and printt functions, those are two variants of print, that automatically add spaces or tabulations between your inputs. Meaning that if you use prints instead of print in our previous example, you'll get all various variables outputted with spaces, which is way easier to read. And similarly, if you use printt instead, you'll get tabulations between your values, which can be a quick way to align debugs that have close length but not exactly the same length, and so this way they will actually show as columns in your console if you want. Another thing that is quite usual when debugging is to have different levels of debugs. You'll have some info that you always want to get, and other that should only be displayed if you're really looking for detailed explanation. This is often called the log level, and it's related to the idea of verbosity, or verbose output. In Godot, there's a nice print verbose function that allows you to mark an output as only for verbose setup, so with that, you can have prints that will always show, and others that just don't show by default, as you can see here, but of course you can actually turn them on by going to your project settings window, toggling on the advanced settings, and searching for verbose at the top, and then you'll just want to turn on the verbose std out option, and so then if you rerun your scene, you'll notice that now there's a lot more in your console to read. That's all the extra debug info that Godot gives you by default, but that is hidden until the verbose std out setting is enabled, and so among all of this, if we do a search in our output console, you see that we do get our custom print verbose message. But of course, if you really want to make top-notch fancy debugs, you'll probably need to go one step further and add some colors and styling to your output. For that, you can use Godot's print rich function, that works just like a rich text label, so you can use BB codes to do per character styling and give unique colors or font variations to various parts of your debug. You can see all the valid BB code tags for this print rich function here in the docs. So for example, with PrintRich, you can get a bunch of different effects that all together create a cool hacker-like output, like the one I showed in the intro, and that you can see in part over here. That being said, PrintRich is just about the visuals of your debugs. It's kinda like makeup. If you want to give a unique style to a message because it's supposed to be an error, then you should probably rather use PrintR. This will make sure that your info is logged to the error output stream instead of the standard output stream. This way Godot will know it's an error and style it properly to match all the other error logs in the console. And even better, you can use the push error and push warning functions. If you do this, you'll see that when you run your scene, no output appears in the console, but that's actually because they've been routed to the debugger. Again, this is better than a simple print-rich coat of paint, because it means that you'll get the entire call stack too, you'll know exactly where your error or your warning was emitted from, and you'll be able to teleport to this spot by directly clicking on these errors and warnings. Though, note that if you also want to stop the execution of your Godot program when it hits your custom error, you'll need to use an asset like this instead, that checks for a condition and stops everything if this condition isn't met. For the sake of completeness, note that there's also a print row function listed in the docs, 
It can be used to output info directly to the system console, and not the Godot console, but I think that's a pretty special use case, so I'm not going to go into too much details here. And to really wrap this up, don't forget that your custom class instances outputs don't always have to look like this. If you want something more readable that really helps you identify the instance, you can override its toString method and return the formatted string you want to show when it's printed. But in any case, there you go. You now know a bunch of tricks to output info to your Godot console with various options, fanciness and stream routing. I really hope you liked these quick tips. Don't hesitate to react in the comments and subscribe to the channel to get more videos. And of course, a huge thanks to my Patreon members for the support and to you for watching. And as always, take care.